Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll clear up some menswear confusion and discuss the differences between blazers, sport coats, and suit jackets. When you shop at a department store or large clothing retailer, chances are you'll probably see most jackets marketed as blazers. But just because they have lapels and buttons doesn't qualify them as being this type of jacket. And it's not just brick and mortar stores that contribute to the confusion around the various names of these garments. For example, on eBay, there's no category listing for blazers or sport coats, only for suits and suit separates. And while it's not totally within our wheelhouse here at the Gentleman's Gazette, we should note also that many jackets with buttons and lapels for women are also marketed under the blanket term of blazer. All of these different factors have contributed to a broader misunderstanding about the true differences between these different jacket styles. So let's clear that up in today's video. We'll start with a suit jacket, which is precisely that. In other words, it is the jacket portion of an outfit made up of either two or three pieces, along with trousers and a waistcoat, that have all been constructed from the same fabric. So, definitionally, if a jacket comes from an ensemble of two or three pieces from the same fabric, it is a suit jacket. Of course, just because this jacket comes from an ensemble of the same fabric doesn't mean that it always has to be worn with its companion pieces. Suit jackets can be worn with other garments in a sort of mix and match technique that's often referred to by the Italian term spezzato. For example, one could take the navy jacket from one suit and the gray trousers from another and mix them together. In a sense, this can blur definitional lines between suit jackets and sport coats because one is breaking up the original unity of the suit jacket from its other companion garments. Spezzato literally means broken. If you'd like to learn more about this distinguished style technique, you can take a look at our article on Spezzato here. So it's easy enough to say that a jacket is a suit jacket if it came from a suit. But other than that, what are some defining characteristics you can use to identify a suit jacket? Overall, suit jackets are usually more formal than either of the other two jacket styles we'll discuss today. This is why the suit has long been considered a sort of default uniform for business meetings, funerals, and other events that require somberness and dignity. The formality of a suit jacket is usually reflected in its relative absence of pattern and texture, and by being generally more structured than a sport coat or blazer will be. The majority of suits are made in smooth, worsted wool in solid and conservative colors, for example, charcoal gray or navy blue. There are a small number of patterns that are considered formal enough for use in suits, such as glen plaids, window panes, or chalk stripes, but there aren't a lot of patterned suit styles that you'll see out there. Speaking structurally, a suit jacket tends to have more padding inside the shoulder area, and in some cases, more canvassing between the inside lining and the cloth itself. The formality provided by this structure, especially in something like a British-styled suit, combined with typical suiting fabrics, makes a suit jacket somewhat more difficult to wear with a different pair of pants, as your upper body is probably going to appear more dressed up than your lower body, and it might simply look like you're wearing the orphaned top half of a suit. By the way, if you're curious as to what we mean by a British-styled suit, and how this might contrast from something like an Italian or American style, you can find our video on that subject here. So the essential difficulty, then, in pairing suit jackets with other types of garments is that padded shoulders and worsted wool are more formal features, so they're not as easily going to gel with other kinds of garments that are slightly less formal. There is a school of thought that says one can lean into this disconnect and pair a formal suit jacket with something like jeans or shorts. But of course, being proponents of classic style, we at the Gentleman's Gazette aren't going to recommend that look. 
So, while the spezzato technique exists for mixing and matching different suit elements, you'll probably have an easier time pairing odd trousers with a sport coat or a blazer. What do we mean here by odd trousers? Not odd in the sense of being weird or unusual, although some designs certainly can be. We just mean that these trousers weren't made to be part of a suit originally, and therefore they can go with a variety of different elements. Similarly, a sport coat, which is also referred to as a sports coat, sport jacket, or sports jacket, is a type of odd jacket, in that you can mix and match it with other garments easily. In a number of ways, the sport coat can be seen as something of an opposite to the standard suit jacket. Where suit jackets are usually smooth and solid in color, sport coats are more often than not made with textured weaves and fabrics, and they come in a larger variety of patterns and colors. Say, for example, something like a houndstooth pattern on a tweed sport coat. By that token, the presence of bolder patterns and more textured weaves communicates that a sport coat was not originally part of a suit, and that it is essentially a more casual garment. As the name suggests, sport coats were originally designed for sporting events in the British countryside, things like pheasant hunting or fishing. While it's not going to be accurate in all cases, one broad distinction to make is that a sport coat would be more appropriate for country wear, whereas a suit jacket would be more appropriate in the city. Of course, given that many men these days aren't going to be wearing any sort of tailored jacket, just wearing a sport coat will still make you more formally dressed than a great many people. Still, a sport coat remains less formal than a full suit, and is appropriate for more casual events like weekend parties or picnics. What is it that makes a sport coat less formal then? Well, we've already talked about the more textured weaves, and the greater variance in colors and patterns. But additionally, there's often going to be less structure in a sport coat as well. Natural shoulders without padding are common, and summer sport coat styles can often lack an internal canvas or a lining. Of course, there are some suits that can lack some of these features like padded shoulders, but as a general rule, you'll see this more casual styling and structure in sport coats more than suits. Another casual aspect that will often set a sport coat apart is the type of pockets that it has. While suits will often have flapped or jetted pockets, you're going to see patch pockets on sport coats more commonly, which are generally more relaxed in appearance. This can sometimes include the breast pocket as well, which would usually be welted on a more formal garment. Finally here then, let's go back to the garment whose name is often used as an all-purpose umbrella term for men's jackets. What really is a blazer? Technically speaking, a blazer is the most specific of these three jacket types because it has to meet a certain set of criteria to qualify as such. One of these criteria, for example, is that a blazer can come in a solid color, most often navy blue, or it can incorporate either contrasting piping or stripes. All other types of patterns technically disqualify a jacket from being considered a blazer. One somewhat common additional ornamentation on a blazer, however, is a crest of some sort, which signifies the heritage of the blazer as a garment worn by men who were members of a particular organization or club. Conversely, you're not usually going to find a crest on a suit jacket or a sport coat. Another key criterion is that a blazer's buttons are going to contrast strongly with the jacket fabric. You're commonly going to see things like gold-colored or brass buttons with anchors on them, or maybe bright mother-of-pearl buttons. As an example here, you're often going to find retailers like Ralph Lauren, who cater to a more traditional crowd, selling blazers with these styles of contrasting buttons. Whatever their specific details may be, blazers are often intended to be bright and ablaze with color, as their name would suggest. For example, the blazers created for the Lady Margaret Boating Club in Cambridge, England, are one such garment. They're said to have started this trend of bright blazers being made of red flannel. 
You're also going to see blazers in other bright colors like green or yellow. The striped versions, which are known as rowing blazers, boating blazers, or regatta blazers, are similarly quite bold in nature. And even the standard navy blazer will command some attention if it has bright brass or mother-of-pearl buttons. Therefore, any man who's wearing a blazer should either be somewhat extroverted to be able to take this additional attention, or in an environment where blazers are being worn by everyone, such as at a nautical event. In a certain sense, blazers exist somewhat in the space between suit jackets and sport coats. Like a sport coat, after all, a blazer is traditionally worn with odd trousers in a different color. At the same time, though, traditional blazers are true to their British tailoring origins, and they're generally more formal than sport coats, possessing some of the structural components of suit jackets, like a more padded shoulder. It should also be said, though, that nowadays you can find some less structured blazers, more influenced by Italian style, which are wading into sport coat territory. For more information on blazers in particular, though, not just how they differ from suit jackets and sport coats, but also their unique history, you can check out our blazer guide here. Everyday language often fails to recognize the traditional differences between suit jackets, sport coats, and blazers. And while using the information we've outlined here today, you'll be able to identify these different types in traditional settings, do be aware that more and more as style lines are blurred and casualized, you may also see hybrids of these jacket styles. There are casual suits with unpadded shoulders that fit more like sport coats, and blazers that fall into this category too. These reflect the prevailing trends for less formal and more relaxed cuts. Still, gentlemen who appreciate the history and heritage of these garments are going to want to know where they came from in terms of the different style elements, and also how to most correctly differentiate between the three. In terms of how to wear and pair these three different kinds of jacket styles, the blazer guide definitely has more information on that type. If you're curious about suits, we've got videos on how to pair shirts and ties with gray suits and with blue suits here. And if you're curious about sport coats, I'd suggest that you check out our tweed guide here. In today's video, it should hopefully be obvious, given the navy blue color and brass buttons, that I'm wearing a blazer. It's double-breasted in configuration, features some padding in the shoulder, but at the same time does have flapped pockets and a single vent in the back, which make it slightly more casual than it might traditionally be. I've paired it with plain charcoal trousers and a blue and white striped French cuffed shirt. In those French cuffs, the cufflinks I'm wearing today are from Fort Belvedere. There are gold-plated sterling silver cufflinks in a monkey's fist knot design. Because they feature tied rope, I figure that they tie into this nautical heritage of the blazer. My other accessories are from Fort Belvedere today as well, including my pocket square, which is an Art Deco Egyptian scarab design in straw yellow, antique brass, blue, black, and cardinal red, and features a brown contrasting edge. Meanwhile, my bow tie is in matter silk and features a diamond pattern of yellow, red, blue, and orange. Both the pocket square and the bow tie have predominantly yellow tones, and so harmonize well with the gold buttons on the blazer. My boutonniere is a pink and white cherry blossom, which harmonizes with both the yellow and red colors in the outfit, as well as the white that's found in the shirt. My socks are from Fort Belvedere, too. They're shadow-striped models in gray and light blue, which of course harmonize with the color palette as well. You can find all of these Fort Belvedere accessories, including the bow tie, pocket square, boutonniere, cufflinks, and socks, in the Fort Belvedere shop here. Rounding out my outfit today, then, are my shoes, which are dark chocolate brown suede penny loafers from Meerman. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.